Hi everyone, this is Glenn Flaherty and welcome to Board Games and Bourbon and today we are going to talk about Riftwalker. Riftwalker is a game uh, about elements and trying to score points. Now, the box portrays a character in a vast land that you explore, but that really is not what the game is about. The game is about elements and it's about scoring points. This is an abstract game. And so basically what's going to happen is you are going to have these element cards and these element cards are going to be laid out in a three by three uh, nine card grid. And you are manipulating this grid. Once per turn you're flipping a card and you're flipping it, let's say, uh, from purple to blue with the purpose of choosing a purple card so you can activate a purple power that is in your hand. And what do the powers do? Well, let's see. Let's pretend this is purple, because it is purple. Uh, if you had a purple power, what it does is it gives you a short-term benefit, but also a scoring opportunity. So remember, here you flip a card that's purple to activate this card. When you activate this card, you get the power in this case. You may uh, flip another card and use its power. That's the bonus power. It activates another scoring card. But when you put it down, when you flip a purple and it lets you use a card, you not only get the power, you get scoring opportunities. So it starts out with no score. The next time purple comes up, you have a choice. You can play another card that's purple, or you can shift this zero point card to now make this card worth three points. Another purple might come up. Again, you can use another purple power, or you can take this purple card and now shift it so that it's worth seven points. Now, the card is worth seven points, but that doesn't mean that you've actually scored it. Let's suppose you have these three cards in your nine by nine grid. What you need to do is you need to find a way to flip all these cards over the course of the game so that you have, let's say, three blues showing up. And if you have three blues in a row, kind of like tic-tac-toe, that lets you take a blue card, let's pretend this is blue, and now, instead of it just being in your personal pile, now you can move it to your score pile, okay? And now you permanently have seven points. You no longer have powers or anything, but now you have points. And the game ends after a certain amount of points for every player. So let's see, what uh, are the rules here? It might I think it's like four, five, six, and seven, something like that in a multiplayer game. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's just say four cards, okay? So after people score four cards, the game is over. The game for two people takes about half an hour, for four people about 45 minutes. The good part about this game is, one, it's very, very colorful, okay? You know, it's very, very colorful. Um, the art stays true to the kind of ethereal, um, you know, look at it. You might say, oh, those are just circles. But actually, when you see it in person, it's actually, uh, it actually is nice. It goes with these cards well. Um, <clears throat> the gameplay does have decisions, and the decisions are the following. You can, in, in your hand, once you activate a uh, color, right, you have the correct color facing up, you can decide, do I want to use a new power? Or do I want to keep advancing my cards do, 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 so it goes from 0 to 3 to 7 so I have the potential to score more points in the future? And why would that matter? Uh, because, you know, you might be in a close game or, you know, Johnny over there might have already scored 3 out of 4 cards. So maybe, ah, God, do I take another turn and waste it trying to take my 3-point card to 7 points? Or do I just score it right now and lock those points in? and end the game on my terms. So you're always debating what to do. That's really cool. Um, so we have the color of the cards, we have decisions that you make. Um, I think it's rather easy to understand. you know. And the cool thing is there's, there's also almost like you're playing two games at once. You have the kind of like go mechanism, flip this, and you know cards are flipping upside down. The tic-tac-toe mechanism, one, one, two, three. So you kind of have this card over here, this game, and then you have your own other game here, trying to hedge your bets here, and then you're kind of like playing against the other people as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, to its detriment, I would say, one, it's an abstract game. So, you know, you got to make sure people are cool with abstract games. Some people aren't. Nearly everyone I know is down with like a story game, but this is more or less an abstract game. Um, that's fine with me. 
Uh, two, the game has its own language that you'll have to get around. When it calls this thing a rift and it says explore a card and something grow your life or whatever it is, all these terms, you have to get those terms down. Um, so with that in mind, it was um, abstract and the terms together weren't for some people. I played this about six times so far. Um, I would say this is definitely a nice change of pace. It's well done. If I was on the BGG scoring system and it said um, whatever score that is that says, you know, if somebody wants to play this game, always happy to play it. That's exactly how I feel about this. Um, you know, it's a, it's a cool game, probably good for four people. And this game, interestingly, perhaps this is a side note, owes a lot to magic in the sense that, you know, Magic really introduced the game that has a lot of words without furthering a story. You know, you're reading the cards, looking at the implications. Now, some games, uh, and I've been getting a lot of games like this lately, uh, some games do it where you really burden down, like you'll just have a fistful of cards, and you're like, okay, which card should I be uh, doing right now? Uh, hold on, let me go through all my endless text. This game has some text, but it doesn't have a lot of text. And um, that also plays to the point that this game is best with three or four players. Not two is fine, but not nearly as interesting. And it actually feels slower with two people. Um, with three or four people, because you are going to try to hedge your bets and say, okay, I'm going to play this and I'm going to play it in this order so these cards kind of cascade against each other. That decision making is made while everyone else is having their turn. So when it actually does become your turn, it actually goes quickly. Everyone's turn goes quickly. When it's just two people, um, you know, Mary Kay does something, you're like, okay, let me see what I do. Then she's waiting while you decide, and then you go. And then it's her turn, so she's deciding, and you're waiting. So it actually feels like you're waiting more when it's in two people. Okay, but outside of that, it's pretty cool. This is in a series of games. Um, Storm Hollow, I think, has another game coming out soon um, that picks up in this world. Okay, so that's Riff Walker. I'll try to provide the BBG link to check it out. Um, just to recap, pretty, abstract, always happy to play it. Okay, thanks guys, have fun. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.